And the angel said unto Mary, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Go and tell my disciples, and Peter also. Hello, I'm Richard Roberts, and welcome to the garden tomb, the empty tomb here in Jerusalem. Yes, a borrowed grave. Why a borrowed grave? Because he only needed it for three days. Remember, he had said to his disciples and to the religious leaders in Jerusalem, kill this body and God will raise it up in three days. That was a prophetic word about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the resurrection of Jesus. Thank God that he said, because I live, you shall live also. And thank God that he loved you and me so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank God. Thank God for the resurrection of Jesus. Thank God for what he did on Calvary. Thank God for his shed blood for the remission of sin. Thank God that his back was bloodied and striped, that we might be healed from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Thank God. Thank God for this empty tomb. And thank God that we have that victory in our lives in serving God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, I once heard a story about a father and a son who became estranged. They had had a terrible argument and they had virtually come to blows. And the son had walked out of the house vowing never to return. The months and the years passed, the estrangement grew worse, and it took its toll on the mother's life, and she became ill. The years passed, and she became bedfast, and begged for her son to come home, and she came down to die. When her husband finally made his first contact with the son, and the son came home and saw his mother in the bed, his father on one side of the bed, him on the other, and she looked up and saw that estrangement, that separation between the two. She reached over with one hand and took the hand of her husband, whom she loved. She reached over on the other side and took hold of the hand of her son, whom she had given birth to. And with her last dying breath, she pulled them together across her body, and she died. Now you say, well, what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with this tomb here in Jerusalem? Well, it has everything to do with this tomb. It has everything to do with you because that's a picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, as Jesus hung on that cross with his head not in heaven nor his feet on earth, he reached up with his right hand representing his divinity and took hold of the hand of an offended God. And with his left hand representing his, his uh, humanity, he reached down and took hold of the hand of offending sinners. And with his last dying breath, he pulled God down and man up so that they could be reconciled at the cross. That's what this is all about. It's about reconciliation between God and man. It's about you understanding that God gave his son for a reason that you might not be lost, that you might not perish, but have life everlasting, eternal, and abundant. Let me ask you a question as I stand here before this empty tomb. Have you met the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know him or do you just know about him? Is he a historical figure to you? Is he someone that you've read about or does he live in your heart? And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you and I want to ask you a question. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you know him? If you don't, then let me pray for you now. In fact, why don't you join in this prayer? Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my heart. Save me. Heal me. Forgive me and set me free. I recognize that your son Jesus went to the cross for me. That he was crucified, dead, and buried for me. That he rose from the dead for me. And right now, I repent of every sin and I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart to fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me a fresh new start. From this hour, I commit myself to God. Friend, if you mean that prayer with all your heart, 
If you are receiving Jesus as your Savior, if you're praying that prayer I'm praying right now, then the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes in and takes up residence in your heart and you'll never ever be the same again. In fact, the Bible says that all things become new. All the old has passed away and everything has become new. That means a brand new life. And if you're meaning the prayer, you're praying and you're praying with me, then Jesus Christ is entering your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. And I thank God for that. And I set my faith with you now. I pray for your healing. I come against every sickness, every disease, every fear, every doubt, everything that stands against you and your walk with God. And I pray for your healing in every area of your life. I pray for the miraculous touch of God. I'm expecting a miracle. That's right. I'm expecting a miracle for you. And I'm expecting it to start now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God's only begotten Son. Amen and amen.